Welcome to the Golf Fitness Bomb Squad podcast with Chris Finn, a production of P4S Golf. Welcome to the Golf Fitness Bomb Squad. My name is Chris Finn. I'm your host. And today I wanted to talk to you all about uh, the PGA show. So I got back from the PGA show. I uh, was down there pretty much the whole week. Um, and there were a lot of interesting takeaways uh, that I had. Um, so actually, gonna, we're going to break this up into two episodes this week. Uh, we're going to take a little little uh, detour from what we usually do. Um, and and uh, reason being uh, twofold. Uh, what I want to talk about in this episode, we'll talk about some of the what I think are the, uh, I think, technologies that I saw that are coming out that uh, are definitely going to make a difference and an impact in how we train, how we, you know, not just physically, but also on the golf side of things, uh, looking at, at the technique and, and uh, ultimately where do I see that going? Uh, what, what should you be on the lookout for uh, in terms of products, services, aids, those sorts of things? Um, and then the uh, second episode this week, uh, so part two, We'll dive into more of um, how to of all the equipment that we'll talk about today. Um, like, how do you actually vet it, and, and how do you uh, how do you pick which training aid you want to use? Those sorts of things, so that you actually have kind of a guide of you know with all the new stuff that is coming out, um, you know what what to do about it. So, um, I've been going to the PGA show since I started uh, P Press Golf, so that was you know a, a decade. Um, it was it's always amazing to me how big it is. Uh, it was a bit smaller, you know, definitely, you know, post COVID, but this year definitely felt like it was back to, uh, you know, pre COVID size, um, as it were, you know, a mile long in the Orange County Convention Center. Um, if you've never been to the PGA show, so when you, when you walk in, it's, uh, you know, if you, you come in the front, you got, you know, all the way to the left is all the, you know, the OEMs, the, the there's a driving range, there's your, your big, uh, you know, generally your big brands, um, although not all of them are there, um, but and then you kind of have uh you know you know all the way to the right you know down the other end is all the the, the fashion and the, and the and the clothing and those sorts of things and everything and anything in between from golf carts to uh, there was one golf cart that looked like it had five foot rims on it <laughs> thing was huge um uh to software to run a golf business to um you know every training aid known to man and woman was there uh, the number of different putting mats and you know, devices and, and different. And then there's obviously all the tech uh, side of things. So I think the one thing that stood out to me this year, there were two things that stood out to me this year. Uh, one was just an interesting observation. There were more simulator companies there than, uh, than I, I knew what to do with. It reminded me of, if you guys you know, remember, I don't know if it was five years ago or whatever, there was this big frozen yogurt uh, like run where there was like a frozen yogurt store that just popped up in every single corner and now they're all gone. Um, that's kind of what it felt like with simulators is there were like so many companies there trying to sell their simulators. Uh, it was, it was pretty wild. Um, now obviously just for those, so those of you who don't know, a, the simulator is the actual software that's running on it. You actually, there, what does matter, what, you know, what matters the most in my opinion is, is the launch monitor. So you actually get correct numbers. So a lot of these simulator companies have to integrate with a, you know, whether flight scope or TrackMan or, you know, you, you name the you know, uh, the launch monitor, um, you know, it, it, they're going to have to, to integrate with, with those foresight, whatever it may be. Um, so you have, you have the, the actual, you know, launch monitor, you have the software of the actual, you know, the courses and everything that you're, that you're hitting. So when you hit a ball, the launch monitor picks everything up and then, you know, the software from the simulator, you know, obviously there's the enclosure and how it's made. Um, but then this, the software is what projects, you know, the game, the video game, quote unquote, right. Um, but anyway, so I that was just an interesting observation. But what the big thing I want to talk about that I thought was interesting um, was the like bursting number of companies t attempting to figure out markerless technology. Um, so basically what that is, and the race is to figure out that if you have your, your phone and you can take your phone and could you film a, a, a you know, a, a golf swing? And no matter your angle, can it marker, you know, mark your body and tell you how much each of your different body parts are rotating, tell you, um, you know, ideally you get how fast your, your body's moving, how fast the club's moving, right? So there's obviously tons of, you know, constraints around that in terms of the technology and how fast the camera is. And if you're off, off angle, well, the, does the software have the technology to correct? And, and how does a 2D video, you know, image 
or video? How, how do you extrapolate 3D data? Um, so there was a wide, wide variety of range of these things. And I was actually, uh, you know, was there, um, obviously if you've listened to the pod before, you know, we work with Kyle Berkshire. He's a good friend at this point. So, uh, he was there demoing and he, they made him hit a, one of the booths, he hit a 360 yard putter, um, with no warm up, and he actually tweaked something. So we had to, had to fix him quick. Um, so we're walking around with him. We had lunch with him. We're walking around, um, just kind of talking and this one company of markerless technology these two guys like run up to him and, and like trying to like basically jump him leaving the food court <laughs> and they're trying to get him to you know to look at it they're they actually had the the balls to ask him to go swing uh on their on their te- you know at their booth so they could video it um it so anyway there, it was an interesting social <laughs> dynamic but it was very interesting as I was talking to him is, you know, basically, um, you know, Kyle and you know, everyone that we we're there with, like, you know, I kind of, they look at me and I'm like, so I start kind of picking it apart and I'm saying, well, how does it account for if the camera's off or how does it account for, um, you know, just lots of different variables and these guys had no answers whatsoever. And so it was just, it was amazing to me how early and how bad some software and some technology can be, particularly, you know, and, and any, any product obviously um and that's obviously we're going to talk about in uh you know part two of this you know of the pga series pga show series that we're doing we'll talk about how to pick the the right stuff uh later you know in the next episode but it was just it was very telling to me that how these these guys had no like they couldn't literally the software couldn't do like it was like kind of like cool to see your swing move and it drew some lines but the lines were meaningless because it didn't correct for the angle of the camera, the height of the camera. It, it was, it was kind of, it was kind of silly. Um, but this wasn't the only company. There were, there were tons of these companies there, you know, trying to sell this, um, you know, this tech to golfers and, and PGA pros to use with their students. Uh, and then there's the, the other end of the spectrum. So, um, you know, we use uh, gas force plates um, and they were launching their, their new markerless technology. Um, you know, system where it's going to come out where I think it has like eight different cameras. So it actually has eight cameras all around you in the simulator and it can marker everything. So this is like research grade, right? So you go from <laughs> the guys running up to, to us, you know, leaving the food court whose thing basically just draws line and does pretty colors. And they've probably sunk millions of dollars into it, which is wild. And then you have this other research grade side of things where if you look at it, it's very accurate. Like, gold standard of what you would want markerless technology to do. Uh, the problem is you got eight cameras, each of which are like two grand. Uh, and they're like literally in the simulator. So if you hit a golf ball and you break camera, you got to buy a new camera. Um, so not very functional <laughs> for, for that part. So, um, so you can still see that where the, this technology needs to go is still has a ways to go where you can get that level of accuracy with just a phone. Um, but it was very interesting to see where the industry is pushing. And, and this is definitely the future of instruction, of analysis, of starting to figure out what kind of drills do you need to do uh, if you have a performance metric. Like, just think of it this way, right? If you have on your phone, you can take a video and with the markerless technology, you know, AI, whatever the technology is, it can tell you, you know, it basically analyzes the swing. And then if it could pull in, the shot data, right? So your path, your attack angle, your, you know, your spin rates, all of those things. And then it could tell you, Hey, to optimize, these are the, the impact metrics that we would want to see and be what we're seeing on the kinematics basically from your 3d rendering is X, Y, Z. And so the, in order to fix that, these would be the, the few areas that you could go after, right? Just, just imagine that of, you know, and that's not that far away. Right. So it, it's 2024 as I'm recording this. I mean, that's going to be here for sure within the next 24 months. Like where, where those two, those two technologies talk, you have launch data and you have markerless uh, 3D kinematic data. And, you know, you start to basically be able, you know, through a program, be able to, to tell like, hey, based on what we're seeing, these would be the possible causes, either be it from a physical issue or a technical issue. Uh, and then these would be the potential solutions to address, to optimize, uh, launch mechanics, right. Or, or launch, uh, conditions. So short, shorter kind of episode, uh, but I thought it was kind of pretty cool. I wanted to share kind of the, 
where I think this technology is going. I think this is probably going to be one of the most impactful and influential pieces of technology because it puts in the hands of the average golfer the ability to do analysis that, you know, until then, you know, you could only, it was only available if you could spend that had thousands of dollars to spend. Um, and I think where the technology, what we see is that as technology ages, it gets way cheaper, right? And so I think that's where you're going to move from twenty, thirty thousand dollar markerless technology systems, which are actually reliable, um, to you know apps that you can put on your phone and 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 use on you know on yourself or you know with your buddies or if you're an instructor, use it with students. If you're in the fitness space, use it with with your clients. Uh, you know, there's there's applications obviously beyond just golf, you know, particularly in the fitness medical world as well. So. Um, anyway, so we're going to, we're going to wrap this, this episode here. Definitely stay tuned on the next episode. Uh, let's, cause I want to dive into some of the other, uh, training aids, uh, and just the other, lots of other stuff that we saw, uh, and just kind of give you some, some ideas of how to make decisions for yourself when purchasing this year, uh, of what types of game improvement devices will help you, um, you know, approach the, the level of play that you want to be at. So thanks for hanging out with always. Let's catch you on the next episode.